Hi there. This is a uh, video to walk through a lot of stuff about writing the equation of a line. When we got a line like this blue one on the graph, and I know the graph is blurry for you, but that's um, it's still a good one to start with. There are some key terms that that come up lots of times. This blue line hits my x axis here and my y axis there. Those are called intercepts. And those are just the points where it hits the x axis and the y axis. We know that the point where it hits my x axis is 7, 0, and I know it hits my y axis at 0 and 3.5. Those are very handy points for a whole lot of stuff that we do. So, um, those are that's a good term to know and good to remember that those zeros happen in there because 7, 0 goes 7 in the x direction and then nowhere in the y direction. And remember, ordered pairs are always x and then y. Now, we're supposed to write an equation for this blue line. Anytime I need to write the equation of a line, I start by writing down y equals mx plus b. You're going to see in your notes in the textbook, they sometimes take a shortcut and leave off the plus b. That's because they know they're working with a direct linear relation, meaning it hits this green point right here, which is called the origin, which makes that y-intercept zero and makes the plus b go away. I prefer to write it all down just because that means there's only one formula to write or to remember, and I know it will always work anyway. Now, when I go to write my equation of the line, it's going to end up y equals some number times x plus some number. The first number we need to figure out is this m. We know m means slope. And to find slope from a graph, we know we go rise over run. Now there is also the formula where you go y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Either of those will work depending what you have. They're just another way to find your rise and run. I can tell because I know this point is 0, 3.5. I know that I could go down 3.5 units as my rise. Now notice I'm going down, so I'm going to say minus 3.5 over a run of 7. And if I do the math there, I'm going to find out, I just move my screen up a little bit, that my slope is negative 0 0.5 or negative 1 half. Those are the same, so depending what uh, you prefer, you can use either one. It's okay to switch to a decimal as long as you aren't rounding. As soon as you round off, then you've lost accuracy. So I'm going to go negative 1 half as my slope. And that's what I put in for m. My b value, and I've got quite a mess here. Let me clean it up a little bit first. Your b is your y-intercept. In fact, it's the y value of the y-intercept. This number right here is my b. So in my equation, I need to put 3.5 there. This is the equation of that line. Now, what does that mean? That means every point on this line, so if you zoomed in, and let's get a color that shows better, and found any point on this line, and there's a million points, because you can always go in between two points and find another one, the ordered pair for that point will work in this equation, always. Always, always, always. The equation is the magic numbers that work and describe the relationship. So let's look. It looks to me like 3, 2 is a point on this line. What if I asked you, is 3, 2 on the line? Could you check? Of course you could. All, the, all you have to do is, is ask yourself, if I put 2 in for the y value, and 3 in for the x value, does it work? It, half of 3 is 1 and a half. Oops. So I have negative 1.5 plus 3.5. Is that true? And if you use your calculator or your noggin, you find out that yes, 2 equals 2. So yes, 3, 2 is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. On the line, y equals negative one half x 
plus 3.5. If you got here and got like 2 equals 7, which isn't true, then you know you're testing a point that's not on the line. So there's the first stuff about how to write the equation of a line. Now what if I give you an equation and I ask you what is slope? If you've got a linear equation and you want to find slope, change oops, the y equals mx plus b form. Now what does that mean? My equation right now isn't in the right order. I need this y. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Notice this 7 does not have an x, so I can't just do the math there. I'm going to have 3y equals 7 minus 2x. They are not like terms. I can't put them together. y isn't by itself quite yet. I'm going to divide by 3. Anything I do to one side, I have to do to everything on the other side. So y equals, now I'm going to have 7 over 3 minus two-thirds x. Notice, if we think about y equals mx plus b, I've got things in a, in a different order. m is always the number in front of my x. b is the constant, or the thing without a variable. Right now, I can tell that slope for this line is negative two-thirds. And if I needed it, I can tell that my, y, that my y-intercept, my b value, is seven-thirds. And that would help me graph it if I needed to. All right, we need to add a page to my thing here. Because sometimes, uh, let's work with this one first. Sometimes we're given an equation of, or a line, pardon me, to find the equation of. So here's a red line, which just disappeared. Come back. There we go, a red line on this graph, and I'm supposed to write the equation of it. Now notice I just screenshot this and I lost all my arrowheads when I cropped it, but you, but you understand those are all really there. So here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis, and we know those are always meeting at zero. And this red line over here is what I'm trying to write the equation of. To write the equation, I know I'm starting from y equals mx plus b, so I need the slope of this line. How can I get the slope? I need two nice neat points. So there's the point 6, 0 and the point 7, 2, making sure you always do your x first and then your y. Ordered pairs always have round brackets or they're just a couple of numbers hanging out. Now if, if I, um, and I'm going to help you even see it better, let's do it in pink. I'm going to draw a triangle so you can see the rise and the run. Here's my rise is 2. My run is 1. So my slope, which I know is rise over run, and make yourself write your formulas down every time, and then you'll remember what they are. My slope is 2. So I know my equation is y equals 2x plus my y-intercept. Now, if you look at my graph, this red line has arrowheads on it. It keeps going forever and ever and ever and ever, and somewhere down there hits the y-axis. But there is no good way to do that. And no, you can't grab a ruler and try drawing squares and, and think that's going to work out for you. There's a way better way. Remember, the equation that we get works for every point on this line. So here's another point on this line. Oops, help if I can hit it at 5, negative 2 is a point on my line. I know that this x value and this y value work in the equation. So I'm going to put them in. I'm going to say negative 2 equals 2 times 5 plus b. Now I have a really nice linear equation there with only one variable in it. So I can solve it. Subtract the 10 from both sides. And I know that negative 12 is my b value. So now this equation, y equals 2x, instead of plus b, I have minus 12. 
there's the equation of that line. Again, if you wanted to check that you got the right equation, you could find another point and try it, but um, I know I'm right. There's the equation of that line. What if I say write the equation of the line that passes through there? You see equation of a line, you write down y equals mx plus b. That's what I should see first at the top left space in your work. Now you know you need your slope. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to say, well, I can find slope because I have two points. And it doesn't matter which way you go. If this is an x and a y, I can make these my ones. This is an x and a y and I can make these my twos. As long as you're consistent, it won't matter. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I've got negative 15 over negative 9. I reduce and tidy that all up because they both divide by 3. And I've got a negative over a negative, which is just a positive. And I know that my slope is 5 thirds. problem. How am I going to find B? Well, I know both of these points are on this line. So I can use either one of them in this equation to find my B value. So let's say that I grab this 2, 3. Y is 3. My X value in that point is 2 and I'm trying to find B. Don't be afraid to work with fractions. We know how to do that. To go 5 thirds times 2, I remember it's 2 over 1 and go straight across. To get to B, I need to subtract 10 over 3. Now, if you grab your calculator and do this, you're going to get a repeating decimal. Repeating decimals are not exact unless you write the little bar over the top and they're really hard to graph. How do you do 3 take away 10 thirds? Well, 3 is 9 thirds, taking away 10 thirds. And I know that negative 1 third is my B value. So now my equation, instead of having a B variable sitting there, looks like that. So there's a really quick summary of linear equations.